Howdy, y'all. Caleb here. This is five ways to fix Saurus. Now, I love getting my Saurus on the table. Unfortunately, she's not very good. There's not really a lot of reason for me to run anything other than Thunder Lizard at the moment. Sometimes you can do a Skink build uh, specifically, but Thunder Lizard's where it's at. So it's hard to complain when we have a great sub faction in the army. But a lot of us got into Seraphin for the Saurus. They are awesome. They have great stories behind them. They got great lore. And the models on some of these things are great. But we all like the Saurus stuff. And we want to play those more. So how could they be fixed if we were given a magic wand, write our own battle tome, and fix the Saurus? Rewrite War Scrolls, fix some heroes. What would you do? Let me know in the comments below how you would fix Saurus. Here's uh, some, some ways that I would do it. But first off, let's quickly go over the problems with the Saurus and the Saurus factions. So right now, all of the Saurus heroes have the same command ability. They have a command ability that is, is purely locked back in the previous edition of Age of Sigmar. Hasn't been updated. That would take a lot of War Scroll changes to get all these guys updated, and I don't see that happening until we get a third edition book. Um, also, the sub-faction abilities are all plus one to hit. That's pretty much the same thing as the command abilities on all the source heroes. You, all, you have command abilities that are all hidden in the combat phase and either doing plus one to hit or exploding sixes, but it doesn't matter because you can't issue it to more than one unit at a time in uh, Age of Sigmar 3. Another problem is no rend on most units. Uh, most of the Saurus units do not have rend. You have a little bit of rend on clubs, and you have a little bit of rend, a little bit, on the Carnosaur's jaws, which is ridiculous. There should be more rend than that. Um, so not a lot of rend in the army. There's no real, real anvil or hammer in the army. And by anvil, I mean something that's just going to stick around. It's going to be really hard to shift. Um, as, as a sub-faction, they, they get the coalesce benefit, so, they, so you do get minus one damage, which helps a lot, but it's, it's still not enough to make a true anvil. We don't really even have a good hammer in Saurus. The Carnosaurs can be good. Um, they, were, they were okay in the last edition, where you could pump a whole bunch of command points on them. Now, you know, they're okay for the points, but they're very swingy, and they just don't have enough rent to, to get through most of what's on the table these days. Um, it's sad because most skinks are just plain better. Uh, a horde of skinks is cheaper, is a better anvil, is a better hammer than a big unit of source warriors. And even if you do take a source list, you require the skink heroes to really get the maximum benefit out of your source units. So we don't want to be doing that, taking a source heavy list with a bunch of little skink heroes to buff them all up. Um, in, in general, it's a melee focused army with no rend or no mortal wound output. And it's slow. There's, this is just not a recipe for success if you're wanting to play a Saurus only list. They, they have some mediocre, some okay units. I think the Saurus Knights see play. I like them a lot as a very cheap screen. They won't do any damage. They're going to roll a lot of dice, but none of it has rend. They all have terrible attack profiles. Um, and so you're going to roll a lot of dice, but not do a lot of damage. The Carnosaurs, they are cheap. They're only 215 points for a monster hero. That is pretty cheap in Age of Sigmar, but they won't really do a lot, especially against some of the heroes in Age of Sigmar 3, where you're going to have some save stacking. That minus one rend on the jaws just will not cut it in this edition. The Source Guard are mediocre. They're, they're good in their role. They're good bodyguards for a Slon or for Croak, but beyond that, they really serve no purpose. Now, bodyguards have a, a place in Age of Sigmar, I think, and so I don't, I don't think they really need to be changed that much, but uh, they, they do have their role. They're okay. <laughs> Our bad units are basically all source heroes on foot. Any of those source heroes on foot, you, just, you don't see them anymore. In Age of Sigmar 3, they just do not make the cut into the army list. They don't have enough synergies. They don't have enough buffs to hand out. Uh, they just don't really have a role. Instead, you, you see those skink heroes take the place of the Saurus heroes, which is kind of sad. Uh, also a bad unit is Saurus warriors. 
uh, for what they do, skinks are just a better option. Uh, so I think overall that's kind of our problems with Saurus. Here are the things that I would fix if I got to <laughs> if I got to do this on my own. So number one, Carnosaurs need more rend. I, I think that's been long been a complaint about Carnosaurs. If we look at that profile, not the best profile in today's Age of Sigmar. The, these are the big attacks that that the Carnosaur has: the clawed forelimbs. Bracket after t after taking two wounds. Once you're on that third wound taken, it's down to fours and threes. No rend. Two damage is nice, but m these attacks just aren't getting through. Only two attacks. You're not getting any of these through. Massive jaws. Now you get you get excited about that five damage massive jaws until you see that attack profile. Fours and threes on a monster hero is just not good. Minus one rend is just terrible in, in today's Age of Sigmar. Uh, and that damage brackets heavily and fast. And so by the time you get this guy into combat, he's probably already been bracketed at least once, maybe twice, and is not doing very much damage. Uh, for comparison here, <laughs> just I was looking at something that has a similar points. And here we're looking at concussors. They're 220. Uh, Carnosaurus 215. The Concussors have the same number of wounds, have a better save. Um, but look at those those attack profiles. Now this is, you're going to have two Concussors for the same price. Um, they're going to have six attacks, better hit profile, better um, rend, rend by far, minus two rend, uh, doing two damage. And Claws and Fangs, you're also going to have six attacks, do, doing threes and threes, better, better profile there, minus two rend, two damage. And you're going to be doing mortals on top of this. Any of the sixes to hit on the hammer are going to do two mortals. So uh, just in comparison, a very similar stat-wise for the unit, but the attack profiles are just wildly different. A unit of concussors is going to do way more than a Carnosaur will. And this Carnosaur is a hero monster. These are supposed to be the, uh, the fun part of Age of Sigmar 3. It's just not going to cut. Number two, I think Source Warriors need to do more damage. I think they're okay as an anvil. I think they, they serve an, an okay role. Now, obviously, skinks are better in that role. Um, cheaper, more versatile. And so I think warriors need to cut out their, their place. When you look at that profile, again, this profile is horrendous. It's a terrible uh, base weapon profiles. Your hit to hits are fours. Uh, on the spear and jaws are fives. <laughs> I mean, these things are, are you're not going to ever do damage with the jaws. You do get extra attacks and coalesce with the jaws and spears. You can get an extra attack if you've got more than 15 models, but who cares? Yeah. Each, each model is going to have four attacks, but on terrible profiles, it, it doesn't matter. Um, th they're not going to do any damage. It's a, it's an okay anvil unit. You know, they do have a four up save. You can buff that to a three up uh, a myriad of ways. And they are minus one damage. So they do okay as an anvil. Um, I think you could do different things where you could, you could really lean into making them more of an anvil. Give them an extra wound. Give them an ability, you know, that uh, gives them another plus one to their save or something. You Like a ward save. I mean, you can make these things into something like a plague bearer. But I don't think that's really needed. I think we have enough damage reduction. They are okay as an anvil unit. I want to see them do more damage. Um, the high damage of Age of Sigmar 3 will wipe out a unit of 30 fairly quickly. I've, I've tried to play with them before, and they get, they get wiped uh, pretty fast. There's a lot of damage in, in this game right now. And so I want some of that. Give me some damage. Uh, we need access to mortal wounds without the Skink Star Priest. Uh, the only semblance of hope for a Source Warrior unit right now is the Skink Star Priest buff that gives mortal wounds on sixes to wound. And so without that little guy, warriors are really not doing any damage. Um, even with him, they're not really doing a lot, but they'll do a little bit. You can get, you can get some damage out if you get Curse Off from like a engine of the gods, but you got to get a dice roll for that, and it's got to you got to set it up. 
you got to get it perfectly set up and then they'll they can do some damage since they're rolling a decent number of dice but i would love to see a source hero that can give you know that same ability the skink star priest has uh, we've got plenty of source heroes let us have that uh ability on one of them or maybe a sub faction that can pass out mortals and we'll get to that here in one of my suggestions here in a moment uh, number number three, Source Heroes and Kotal's Claw, which is where the sub faction you run Source, and if you're running Source, are redundant. Now look at look at this uh, lineup here of our command abilities: Eternity Warden in combat phase, plus one to hit; Old Blood in combat phase, plus one to hit; Old Blood on Carnosaur in combat phase, plus one to hit; Scar Veteran Carno in combat phase, six is to hit. Um, equal an extra hit, but you can't use it at the same time as any of the plus one to hits. Um, Scarvet Cold One, same thing. In combat phase, can't stack this with anything else. Sunblood, in combat phase, plus one to wound. That's great, but you can't use it with anything else here. <laughs> um, and all of these are redundant with the generic all-out attack, which is plus one to hit. So you can already get this at, from any hero you want to take, and you don't have to take any of these source heroes. Um, in Kotal's Claw sub-faction, the ability is in the combat phase, plus one to hit if you charged. Again, at least you don't have to spend a command point for this, so you could stack it with one of these other ones uh, for a little bit of synergy. But the Kotal's Claw command ability, again, in combat phase, plus one to hit if you charged. Um, so... You see a lot of redundancies here. And I think this is probably where we have the greatest opportunity for actual fixing this is a Kotal's Claw rewrite. Just rewrite that sub-faction. And I think one of the great ways to do that is with these White Dwarf um, updates that they do where they'll update either a sub-faction, an allegiance, um, or an entire army in some cases. So I think... If we're not going to get a book anytime soon, this would be a great place, White Dwarf, to update Kotal's Claw. And that brings me to my suggestion for number four is a Kotal's Claw uh, rewrite. And bear with me here. There's a lot of text here, but I think this is this could work for a Kotal's Claw rewrite. Um, this would be an easy update, and it could be done in a White Dwarf. And it uses a lot of the same verbiage that we already have. And... I'm looking at ways that I can do more damage in, in Kotal's Claw. It's a melee army, and you want to get in there in the mix, and I don't want to have to rewrite every single War Scroll that we have. So maybe we can do something here with like a White Dwarf Allegiance update here that would help us in Kotal's Claw. Now, I've taken a lot of this stuff as inspiration from Cruel Boys. Uh, Cruel Boys has some interesting abilities where they're coming out of the, the swamp and they're going to do a lot of damage. And I, that's what I would love to see with Kotal's Claw. They're, they're coalesced. They're coming out of the forests. They're coming out of these jungles, I mean. And they're going to do some damage when they get a hold of you. They don't have any shooting, but when they get a hold of you, they can do some damage. Uh, that's how, that's how Source should be. It should be tough when they get into combat. Um, and so our Kotal's Claw battle trade, if I were to write this, would still be Savagery Incarnate. That, that's the name of the current one. But I would change the ability. If the unmodified hit roll for an attack made by a Saurus model is six, that inflicts one mortal wound on the target in addition to any normal damage. Now, this would be a lot of fun. It is limited to Saurus, so we're not, we're not throwing hordes of skinks into here. That's, that's one thing I want to avoid. We don't want a whole bunch of skinks in here. We don't want this to proc on Bastildons or something like this. We want this on our Saurus models. All of a sudden... Uh, I don't care that everything hits on fours. I'm fishing for sixes. You know, I don't care that I have terrible profiles on the source warriors, on the knights, on the guard. That's fine because my damage isn't coming from that. I'm just, I'm just looking for sixes. Now, obviously, you're not going to do a a metric ton of damage, but the more dice you can roll, the better chance you have at rolling sixes. And so this kind of leans into that ability of we've got a of of a few different ways to get extra attacks. Uh, Savagery Incarnate, if it procced mortals, would give us an ability to do some damage with these units. My command ability, I'm, I'm keeping the name Controlled Fury, um, but this one is also kind of, kind of copying one of the Cruel Boys abilities. 
In your hero phase, pick one friendly Kotal's Claw Source unit, wholly within 12 inches of a friendly Kotal's Claw Source hero. Um, until your next hero phase, when you use a Savage Reincarnate Battle Trick for that unit, mortal wounds are causing an unmodified hit roll of five instead of six. So basically, now you have a roll for any of your foot source heroes. You know, they can help proc this ability, which would give that unit a five up mortal wounds instead of sixes on those hit rolls. Um, this would be pretty powerful because you'd have quite a bit of, of, of dice you're rolling, um, but you're only going to get to do it onto one unit. So you got to plan that ahead of time in your, in your hero phase and know which unit's going into attack. Uh, very similar to some of the Cruel Boy stuff that we're seeing here. Uh, my command trait, a Saurus. Uh, this is also Dominant Predator. Same name as, as, as before, but we're going to give it a, a refresh. <laughs> a Cobalt's Claw Saurus General with a monster mount must have this command trait instead of one listed in the command trait section. So this is, we're going to be giving this to a Carnosaur. Um, Dominant Predator, improve the rim characteristics of the weapons used by this General's mount by one. <laughs> Yay. So claws will have minus one rend, which is okay. But jaws will have minus two, which is which would be decent for the carnosaur. It's not going to make the carnosaur completely overpowered, but it'll make it uh, at least to where we have minus two rend on the jaws. That's what we want. Please, minus two rend on the jaws. Uh, obviously, we go higher if we're just like wish listing, but I think this is something that would be reasonable. Kotal's Claw Artifact of Power. The first Kotal's Claw hero to receive an Artifact of Power must be given the Eviscerating Blade. Uh, now this one, you know, currently in Kotal's Claw, um, it, it basically conflicts with all your other, like, sixes to hit explode type ability. Um, and so you can't do both at the same time. So let's change that. Uh, eviscerating Blade, again, I'm copying one from Cruel Boys. Um, once per battle at the start of the combat phase, you pick one enemy monster within three of the bear and roll the dice. On a one, nothing happens. On a two to three, that monster suffers D6 mortal wounds. On a six, that monster suffers two D6 mortal wounds. So, you know, GW loves these kind of one-off type of artifacts where if you roll a one, you can have nothing happen or the artifact destroy itself, like, uh, like our Fusil. Uh, here, you have a chance it's only against monsters. It's only in the combat phase, so you have to get in there. This is just kind of a flavorful artifact. The Eviscerating Blade can do massive damage to a monster or two, if you roll two uh, ones. Um, but would be a little fun here. A another way for us to get some mortals in combat. So here's my Kotal's Claw Refresh, uh, GW. If you're watching this, feel free to copy this. Uh, most of these are rules you've already written in, in uh, Cruel Boys that I've just kind of modified a little bit uh, that I really like for Kotal's Claw. What do y'all think about that? Would you play that? <laughs> All right, on number five, a named source hero. I would love to see a named source hero. Um, and I think that a named source hero on foot is kind of what GW would like to do um, if they were to refresh one of these. You've seen this a lot with like Gotrek, with the Light of Altharian, with Bastion. Uh, you can either use a a you know, Eternity Warden from the lore or a Sunblood from the war lore. There's some great stuff there or just make up a new one, kind of like Bastion and give us a, a source hero. I would like one on foot or maybe even the Scar Vet on Carnosaur, uh, on a uh, cold one. That, you know, is hard to kill, can do some damage with, when it gets in melee, a little bit slower than these mounted guys, but has a board presence, has some unique rules, has some kind of little gimmick that it does that can either, you know, increase its its survivability or increase its damage, or in the case of Gotrek, both. <laughs> you know, uh, price this thing at like 300 points, give them an awesome name, and uh, let us have some fun with a named source hero. That's what I would like to see. All right, those are my five ways to fix source. I think a lot of that comes down to a rewrite of Kotal's Claw. That's what I would really like to see. Uh, Kotal's Claw is a fun sub-faction, but as it's written right now, it's just really hard to play. So, all right, let me know what you think, and uh, give me your suggestions for how to fix Saurus in the comments below. Love to read them. All right, guys. Catch y'all next time.